Hello pot stickers. Yogurt is so tasty and full of healthy probiotics. And it's so simple to make your own plant-based yogurt from scratch at home. Now you can make yogurt from all different kinds of ingredients, from coconuts to peanuts, or today I'm gonna to show you an almond-based yogurt. To begin, we're gonna start with making an almond milk. Then I'll show you how to culture that into yogurt. I'm using pasteurized raw almonds today. It's hard to find like unpasteurized raw almonds, but if you can find it, even better. But these happen to be pasteurized, but it works just fine. As long as they're not seasoned and salted and cooked. We're going to take one cup of raw almonds and soak them in water for at least six hours. I usually do this overnight. After they soak, you want to peel the skins off of the almonds. All you need to do is give them a little squeeze and the soaked skins will slip right off. It is a bit of work to remove all the skins. If you just want to make almond milk, you don't have to take the skins off. You can just blend this up and strain it and you'll have perfectly good almond milk. But the skins do contain tannins that could inhibit the cultures of the yogurt fermentation. So I actually prefer to spend the time to get them all clean when I'm making yogurt. Throw your soaked almonds into your blender and add three cups of water. So the ratio is one cup of dry almonds before soaking to three cups of water in the blender. Also add a pinch of salt and a teaspoon of sugar. The sugars will help the cultures to grow. You can add other sweeteners if you want, like if you want to put in a couple of dates and blend that up, that'll work. Or if you want to add maple syrup or agave nectar, that also works. Blend this for a few minutes until it is all liquefied. Strain the milk through a nut milk straining bag, or as I'm doing, a linen cloth. If you can't find nut milk straining bags, I've heard people have had good luck with using the paint straining bags that you can get at your big box home improvement stores. I don't know about the food safety of those, but they should work okay to strain the milk. Give it a good squeeze and get all of that milk out. Now what you have left is the almond pulp and you can save that for baking. You can use it for breads and crackers or cookies and things like that. Next, you wanna heat that milk up until it reaches a low boil. This helps to set the starches and helps thicken the yogurt so it doesn't separate after culturing. If you don't do the boiling, you can still do the fermentation, but what will happen is the whey will separate out more. You'll get like a thick cream type of yogurt at the top. And I don't think it's really as good as doing this cooking step. Let this cool down until it's at least 110 degrees Fahrenheit or cooler. That's about 43 degrees Celsius. Now for the fermentation, you want live cultures. I'm using a couple tablespoons of a commercial vegan yogurt that has live cultures in it. You only need to do that once because once you make your first batch of yogurt, you can use that same yogurt to culture new batches and keep using it over and over again. You can also use the contents of a probiotic capsule to culture your yogurt. I think for the best yogurt, you wanna make sure that you have at least two of the lactobacilli bacteria. That should contain Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. These two cultures together are what most commercial yogurts are made with. Cover this and set it in a warm place. It'll take about 12 to 24 hours for your yogurt to ferment if it's close to room temperature. You could use the yogurt setting of your Instant Pot and put a jar of this in there, or if you have a yogurt maker, a yogurt heater, you could use that as well. If you have a way to keep the temperature at about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, it will be done in as little as six to eight hours. Another option might be to put it into an oven with the light on to keep it slightly warm overnight. As you can see, after my yogurt is fermented for about 24 hours, it has thickened and is creamy and tangy. If it isn't tangy enough for you, just let it ferment outside on the counter for a little longer. Once it's to your taste, you can store this in the fridge for at least a week or longer. I like the texture of my yogurt to be on the looser side. If you like it thicker, you can always drain off some of the whey with a cloth, or you can always start with a little bit thicker almond milk. In that case, use a water to dried almond ratio of about two to one instead of three to one. That will end up thicker in the end. But this is just perfect for me. I like to eat this with fruit as I'm showing you here, but it's also great for marinades, if you're making Indian tikka recipes, or I wanna make a tzatziki sauce with this so I can have a Greek yogurt sauce, that would be so fantastic. And I think this texture might be really good for that. I'm working on more recipe videos using this yogurt that I'm gonna be sharing with you soon. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you'll be notified of my upcoming videos. Thank you again, and please join me next time as the pot thickens.